Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to a new video of Geo Insider. Today's interview is super special as we're starting on a new theme of natural hazards. This interview will be about volcanology, so enjoy! Simona, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Simona Gabrielli, I'm a postdoc at the Italian Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology. I got my PhD at the University of Aberdeen, so in Scotland, about uh, uh, volcanic uh, volcano seismicity of Mount St. Helen and uh, also correlation with the geomorphology. So it was like to try to connect two worlds together. And uh, right now I'm working on, the, on seismicity of the central Apennines. So I'm not really working right now on volcanic uh, stuff, but I'm still, of course, interested in it. Of course. And maybe in the future I will continue to work on that, to be fair. Because it's actually, I think that it's, uh, how can I say? Uh, I really enjoy more the volcano seismicity, seismicity rather than tectonic because there are so much to know more about uh, rather than the usual tectonic seismicity. How is it to study volcanology? What do you find so interesting about it? What makes you excited to learn more? I think that volcanoes are in general really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, they've been so important since sense and time anyway, volcanoes. So um also for i mean populations living around there so it means that there is something important in this and knowing more it could be useful uh, also of course for the populations that are living there so the hazard and risk management uh, there is a lot to do in volcano honestly in, uh, in the volcanology in general there are so many fields, so also this is interesting. And everything is connected uh, because geochemistry could be connected with geophysics. And uh, as I said, with my PhD, there was geophysics that was connected with the geomorphology. So also this is everything is linked and that's nice too, in my opinion. Yeah, that's great. And that sounds amazing. What was your favorite part uh, of your journey so far? Was it, you know, uh, the PhD part, the undergraduate part, for example? Like, what did you like most? Totally the PhD. Honestly, I think that the PhD was the most amazing period of my life, but also because I was living abroad. So I had a completely different uh, um, like adventure basically mm -hmm. of my life because my bachelor, I did my bachelor basically at my hometown um, and uh, then I moved to Rome so it was the first time that I was moving alone, uh, living by my own and um, it was interesting uh, and then I've done a master degree in a different place uh in Tuscany which was amazing too because I mean it's Tuscany and then I moved finally in Scotland for these years and it was really great and also the PhD gave me the opportunity to travel a lot which is something that geology generally gives the opportunity to the students because you are doing a lot of field work so I remember how my uh, my friends were doing like economics or uh, Italian literature, they were like, oh my God, you're so lucky because you're traveling while you're studying. And it was amazing. And with the PhD, I was able to go also abroad, uh, traveling abroad for the field work, like I had to go to Mount St. Helen, which is in the uh, uh, United States. So that's a great opportunity, in my opinion. And at that point, I said, okay, I would do also the holiday here in the state. <laughs> so let's go to see Grand Canyon, um, Monument Valley. Uh, so I repeat, I think that PhD was an amazing period also for these things. It gave me a lot. Also, I started to knew uh, also people from around the world, which is something that if they're living in Italy, you are able to do, but not a lot, in particular if you are coming from a town like mine, which is big, but not that big, not so international. So it was nice also to be in contact with uh, different people that can live from you. So not loud Italians, but also other kind of countries. 
Yeah, that sounds like an amazing opportunity. And I mean, that's one more amazing reason to study geology. You get to see the world, you get to see, you know, real geology. And that's great. But what I wanted to ask also is how you got started on this journey. Because for very many people of my age, what I noticed, there is a sort of misunderstanding of what geosciences are. They're viewed as this foggy concept that is neither real chemistry nor physics nor maths it's sort of it doesn't fit into any category so may, many people just shy away so what what made you confident to choose this path for yourself i live in a place in a part of italy where there is a lot of um ge- any kind of basically geological risk besides volcanology because we have uh, a lot of earthquakes, unfortunately, which are also with uh, several, um, probably like 300 deaths. So um, it's um, it's quite uh, high risk. It's probably the highest risk for the seismology in all Italy. So I, since I, I was a kid, I can remember every earthquake that, every earthquake that, happened uh, in the last probably 30 years because I'm 34 almost so I can clearly remember those moments so uh, even if geology is not the biggest uh, which is probably unfair um, how can I say uh, science here in Italy I'm saying that is unfair because we have almost every kind of geological risk as I was saying for volcanology hydrogeological risk and uh, uh, we have as I said uh, earthquakes so um, anyway we are aware about this in particular as I said in my region so um, and since the, uh, since I was a kid anyway I was so fascinated by rocks so I live uh, next to the beach uh, so basically every during the summer I was collecting every stone that I was um, encountering in the beach my, my mother was hating me because she was like no we need to throw them away I was coming back with baskets full of, of stones so um, at the end uh, when I discovered that there was geology in my hometown I said okay that's the probably the right thought for me because I was trying to do something that is different I was trying to be a doctor in medicine but uh, I wasn't able to do so. So I said, okay, geology probably is the right thing for me. And then from there, I discovered that there are so many fields in geology that I could really enjoy, like geochemistry, volcanology, or physics. So I've decided to take, um, to, to take that path. And uh, that's why, but I, I agree with you completely because uh, as I usually say, uh, there is a lack of uh, geological culture sometimes. So people don't, don't really realize how this could be important as like an impact, how this could influence everyday life. So I completely agree with you. That is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I find it so uh, heartwarming because you're not the only one. I mean, I've always loved collecting rocks and um, the way I like to think about it, you know, some people love flowers and they want their house to be full of flowers and green colors. That's the same approach I take with stones. I mean, I have an entire house full of candy boxes, uh, which used to hold candies, but now hold rocks. So I can totally relate. And uh, you left on a very good note for our next question. Uh, what is this impact that so many people misunderstand? You know, how can volcanology really, the knowledge of volcanology help us on our path towards sustainability, towards protecting our communities in a better way? Well, if I think about population or any way, human people and volcanoes. I was straight to think about the volcanoes in Italy, like the one, the Vesuvio one, which is the most famous probably, and the Campi Frigerei, all places that have plenty of people around and in it, because Campi Frigerei could be called as a 
super volcano and there are people actually living in the caldera. So uh, yes, I, it's, it's insane. So of course, this is the first thing that I think about knowing more about volcanology because this will impact for sure millions of people that are living there. Um, but also uh, knowing about the impact uh, of volcanoes could help since the ancient time, that's what I want to say, that since the ancient time anyway, people uh, could really live with, with volcanoes because they knew the importance like of soil because the soil um, is really fertilized. So uh, the best, uh, as I said in my blog post, best wine together with Alessandro Musso, um, we wrote this blog post about the importance of volcanic soil for uh, wines. So some of the best wine in Italy are coming from volcanic soil uh, and not just from Italy, also from France or uh, United States, uh, because they have some components which are really important for the, for the wine itself. But not just that, also um, vegetables, so daily life again. Um, there are so many things that the volcanoes are giving to us not just the danger side. So I think that it's important to try to find a balance between the two things. So maybe try to avoid to live inside of a caldera, or if you want to live inside a caldera, maybe you need to hear, to listen to the scientists, which are actually like, maybe they know a little bit more about that. And when they say probably it's time to live, it's time to take into account the fact that you're living in a volcano, just do it. And this is not just about volcanology. This could be also related to landslides or uh, or earthquakes. But of course, volcanoes have also this positive side of the soil, which is, as I said, known since the ancient time. Yeah, that's the coolest thing about um, geosciences. No topic is one dimensional. Like you can't say that something is either good or bad. Like landslides are only bad or earthquakes are only bad or volcano eruptions are only bad like your amazing blog post about uh wines and volcanoes our audience should definitely check it out i will leave a link in the description of this video it it really shows the different connections that again volcanology has to other areas of our lives such as agriculture which we have literally we should thank volcanoes for helping us survive through those years where we would not have had good crops, you know, without this fertile soil. And this just shows you another way that understanding these things could be very, very useful. And of course, listening to science is important when it comes to protecting our communities. Yes, living in a caldera is not the best decision, but at the same time where you have, you know, prices of land go up, uh, enormous, you know, uh, population growth, uh, there should yeah. be continuous risk, risk assessment for any situation. And yeah. I think that only a very well informed geologist, or at least a team that has a good informed geologist, volcanologist, will be able to make that assessment. Yeah, definitely. Indeed, uh, thinking about like a team, I'm thinking about the first volcano uh, volcanic observatory which is in Naples so where is the Vesuvio and the Campi Fagrai and I think it's the first in the world so it was the first in the world so this already makes you realize how the the impact of volcanoes on our society in that area was already fundamental uh, centuries ago so that's great and uh, another thing that I haven't mentioned before is the fact that anyway, um, volcanoes could have also an impact with climate change, climatic change. So it's something that we um, have to study and there are, I'm sure plenty of people would are doing this job uh, about this impact of huge eruption that could have in general on climate change for the increase of gases in the atmosphere and uh, this could create some, in some cases, if I'm not wrong, uh, caused also some uh, like uh, little uh, ice ages, uh, like during medieval times. 
So it's something that we need to understand and also uh, let people uh, uh, be aware about this. This is fundamental too. Yeah, 100%. I remember reading relatively recently a research paper about um, greenhouse gas emissions from non-anthropogenic sources. So, and volcanoes were the number one uh, source of those greenhouse gases. But in the present times, of course, human activities cause way more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But what is very useful, if I think, if you understand volcanology on a very advanced level, you are able to literally see how how Earth's climate has evolved over time because this is a self-regulating mechanism with volcanoes. The more eruptions you have, the more uh, suspensions you have in the air, the less uh, sunlight um, uh, travels through the atmosphere, the colder the climate uh, gets, and you have this, you know, uh, negative reinforcement loop. So exactly. Exactly. Another, yeah, another reason, another very good, very um, relevant reason to study volcanology. So, thank you so yes, much. Definitely, you're completely right on that. That's right. And what about uh, new tendencies? Like, how would you see volcanology changing in the next couple of years? That's interesting. I think that um, for what concerns geophysics, because I'm more a geophysicist, of course. Um, there is a lot of like every year there's something new. There's some other discoveries. Uh, so I think that um, a lot will come from the uh, machine learning and the AE in general, because uh, they will really give an help in understanding how volcanoes will behave in in general. So starting from the gases to uh, the um, development of like uh, uh, earthquake swarm or how also maybe the impact of an eruption to that on the land uh, around. So I'm sure that there will be a new development with machine learning and also with the uh, new discoveries made maybe with new techniques, uh, maybe microscopes that are even uh, with a higher resolution, because I'm sure that there will be some kind of development. Uh, if I think that 20 years ago, everything was so different from maybe other background, scientific background, uh, I'm pretty sure that 30 years in science is a big gap. It seems short amount of time but it's a big gap it's not that short <laughs> Absolutely. So, so i'm sure that there is gonna be something new also in 15 years something big yeah so, yeah that's yeah. why uh coming back to what you said earlier it's important to appreciate those different um, influences that geosciences have on different areas and to stay curious to uh, keep an open mind and I think that having that you will be able to make a big impact and this applies not only to geosciences but just to highlight the fact that it is very very possible to make a big impact through geosciences and through volcanology so yeah that was a very good comment so um, touching a little bit on the aspect of uh, young people who maybe are considering to study geosciences. How does the field um, look right now? Because there are some statistics that are not very inspiring. They're not very positive. There are very few people enrolling in, well, of course, relatively uh, to other uh, areas such as uh, um, computer science, for example. You can't compare the two. There are way, way few, fewer people applying to geosciences. What do you think is the reason for that? And um, do you think there could be anything to motivate? Is there something we're missing out? Well, um, I think that, I mean, I think that there are many reasons, to be fair. Um, one is probably that when 
someone is applying to geology or thinks about that, I'm saying from a, an Italian point of view, the most of the time, the, um, the answer of everyone around is like, you will never find a job. You will never work with that, never. Uh, but what they don't realize is the fact that um, there are so many things that a geoscientist could, could do, like um, research, but you have also the industry. And within industry, I'm not just saying oil and gas. Uh, there are also things related with uh, satellites like LIDAR or INSAR, so information that in some way they are also still uh, related with some research. Um, so there are so many fields and uh, probably um, young people, if they receive this kind of advice like, uh, no, don't even start because you will never find a job, uh, you will start to do something completely different. Uh, that's wrong. And uh, the other thing, as I was saying before, there is this lack of geological culture, as I us uh, used to call it. So I can clearly remember when I said to a guy that I is not a friend, someone that I knew, when I said, uh, ah, I'm enrolled in um, geology, I've started this university, it answered me back like, oh, geology, the um, uh, the useless uh, uh, university in the world. And I look at him and I was like, I don't even know what to say. And the, the year after, there was one of the biggest earthquake here in, in Italy, in, in my region, with, as I said, 300 uh, dead. So I've never seen him after that. And I, I said, the best answer could have been, you see, if geology wasn't that important, and if people uh, were building, uh, knowing about the geology of that side, of that area, of the town, of the city, maybe we wouldn't get 300 people under the buildings that there would be maybe people living. So um, that's also something wrong, I'm sure. And mainly I'm talking about, as I said, Italy, um, another thing is the fact that, of course, as a female, if you start a um, scientific field, uh, STEM for um, in general, everyone would be, maybe you are not enough, or um, what about the family, if you are a researcher, what about that? So, but I think that this is going to change soon. I'm seeing that there is something actually changing not just for women but for also other uh, background uh, like people of color in general so something is changing probably in this too um in italy i'm not seeing a change for the culture as i said so i hope that this will be done and um, we will see maybe another thing that is that people should start to talk about the benefits of being ge a geologist and not the about the negative part. So absolutely. that's another thing. Thank you very much, Simona. I absolutely agree with everything that you have said. And I uh, just wanted to ask, are there any other um, difficulties that you have had to overcome to make an impact in this field i'm asking this so you know other people can relate and uh, learn um well i think that um, one thing that um was difficult for me was a physical i'm not saying impairment because i don't have a big physical impairment but impediments but when i do field work um i can clearly see that people are faster than me uh people have more strength than me uh because i have um a, something about my blood that is not giving me the right amount of oxygen so for me walking too fast is really um, stressful for my body so i need to stay at my pace and uh, I could clearly see how I was the last and uh, they had to wait for me, but no one was really care about, caring about this. So 
I was feeling not good for field work also for this kind of reason. And then, as I said, my problem is really a small problem. I think about people who would like to do field work but cannot because maybe they have a kind of impediment. And um, uh, I don't think that this is completely fair. I mean, I don't think that is fair at all. Uh, you have to give to everyone the opportunity to do a field work um, with their own, uh, um, how can I say, um, at their own pace, yeah. knowing, um, using again this word. Um, so this is probably the main difficulty that I found. So that's why also geophysics is good for me because I need just a computer and that's it. Yeah, it's yeah. good for Coming me. back to your post for EGU, how did you come mm -hmm. in contact with the European Geological Union and what motivated you to become a writer? So wh wh how much time have you been doing this and what role has this played in your life? Basically, so... I started to write, I think, one year ago, one year and a half, I don't remember quite well. Um, and I tried to have an approach, like an interdisciplinary approach and uh, a really simple approach. Like, I think that what we are writing has to be um, clear to everyone. Like in the last blog post that was about mineral and arts, uh, I said, I want to be sure that my mother can understand that. <laughs> so it has to be simple. Everyone has to understand that. And so my mother actually wrote me, I, I understood everything. That's good because it's what I wanted. <laughs> so that's the kind of approach that I had. And um, it's quite different because it's not like um, a scientific, real scientific one. I mean, it's still science, but in a simple way. I, can totally I confirm. think it's fundamental. I confirm the it. One about volcanoes is my favorite. Volcanoes and wine uh, is my favorite because also I've enrolled the sommelier course to be a sommelier. <laughs> so I'm also interested in wine, food, and try to find this connection with the volcanoes and soil, it's amazing, honestly. You discover a lot, a lot of the techniques. So probably that one is my favorite. But also the other one, honestly, the one about colors uh, and lavas, also it, it's quite fun, I think, because uh, there is this, like, this amazing photo about this blue lava. And uh, my friend called me saying, what is a blue lava? I said, I have no idea what is a blue lava. Like, let me check. And from there, I started this blog post because I said, no, okay, it's not actually blue lava. It's something else. But people maybe are looking for blue lava, but they are not finding uh, the right uh, description of it. So uh, I said, but there are maybe also other colors about lava. <laughs> so, and uh, that was actually fun to write also. <laughs> Can you tell our audience just briefly, like in one minute, uh, what causes those different colors? So basically, uh, for what concerned the blue lava is uh, uh, sulfuric acid, if I'm not wrong, which is burning. So this, this lava is full of this uh, gas and in contact with the hair start to burn. And uh, during the night, uh, this gives this amazing blue flames uh, all around the lava flow uh, all on the lava flow and so if you are looking at that actually seems like blue lava but it's normal lava it's just the gas above it uh, while for the white and black lava uh, is uh, a kind of lava with is it in the old lengai in tanzania and is probably the the only a uh, volcano which is giving carbonatite, so a kind of lava which is full of um, uh, calcium uh, carbonate. So this is giving this kind of white color, which is quite atypical for lava if we think about even when it darkens after uh, is, uh, it's cold. It's not that white or it has a different color, of course. 
So yes, basically it's the composition, a composition that changes, which is a quite atypical rather than usual lava flows. Yeah, thank you. So guys, learn volcanology and you'll learn all about uh, blue lava and white lava and black lava. I can only wish you luck with uh, all of my heart. Uh, you're an amazing person. You're an amazing author. And <laughs> uh, I really hope to uh, keep reading your blog posts and uh, hope to have you again on Geo Insider on future interviews. Whenever you want, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we invite you to check out our Earth Science Matters webpage for more interesting content. Bye-bye.